Canadian golf's most significant proving ground. There's a lot of good players here. Is in full swing. Stomping grounds for Canada's most promising talents. It's great to compete with these great players. That's why we're all out here. I mean, you want to come out here and you want to perform. As they play for their futures. My goal for the year is to earn my uh, McKenzie Tour card for next year. And take the next step towards the pinnacle of golf. If I want to play in the PGA Tour in the Corn Ferry. I'm looking forward to achieving those goals. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. With four tournaments in the books and four more to be played in the 2021 Mackenzie Tour season, the race to the top of the order of merit is anyone's for the taking, with 500 points awarded to the winner of each event. Just a good solid chunk of points that are hopefully put me in a good position to get in that top five. The top player at the end of the season will earn full status on the 2022 McKenzie Tour. Numbers two through five on the points list will receive conditional status, while six through 10 will earn a sponsor exemption into a 2022 McKenzie Tour event. I plan to finish as high on the points list as I can and set myself up in the best way possible for next season as well. The McKenzie Tour serves as a key step on the path to the PGA Tour. Take it from Taylor Pendrick, who parlayed his win at the McKenzie Investments Open two years ago into a PGA Tour card this upcoming season. Being from Canada was kind of where I wanted to start my path to the PGA Tour. The McKenzie Tour really prepares players well. It teaches you how to compete, travel, you know, all the aspects of your golf game, and it's run super well, which really prepared me for the Corn Ferry Tour. And, um, ultimately the PGA Tour. The 2021 McKenzie Tour season kicked off at the McKenzie Investments Open, where players hope to follow Pendrith's blueprint. The McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada is back. Gander Newfoundland's Blair Bercy set the pace at 10 under par through his opening rounds to take a two-shot lead into the weekend in Blaineville. Meanwhile, Oswegan, Ontario's Jesse Smith was tied for six at three under, heading into the weekend after two rounds under par. And as the son of a Mohawk from the First Nations, Smith is proud of his background and playing for more than himself. He was such a powerful individual, such a unique person, such a special person, and uh, he passed away when I just turned 16, but I'm so thankful that I got those years with him because he was such an ultimate competitor and a winner. Right before he died, he basically, one of the last things he said to me, he said, you know, go get him, you know, like, and he always wanted to stress, you can't be afraid to fail. My adult life has been defined by my pursuit in professional golf, and then also my return home, my return to my family, uh, my community, my culture. I'm passionate about both, so being at Six Nations is probably one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life. It's obviously a, an awful time. The news is so heavy, it's so tragic, it's so full of trauma. You know, in a strange way, it's almost validation for First Nations peoples and communities that have been talking about this and had to go through it and experience it for generations. Non-Indigenous people are very supportive and very open to learning about it and very empathetic to the struggle and, and the experience that people had to go through. Learning about it is very challenging and very difficult, but it's not just important, it's necessary. I've been very fortunate to be involved with the Dreamcatcher Foundation for years uh, as not only giving back to our community but giving back to people all over Turtle Island, all over Canada and the U.S. I've been very involved uh, with a lot of the golf clinics. I just love to be around the kids and to help them and to be able to pass on the information that I've learned. The last year and a half has been tough on everybody and uh, so to be back out here and to be with the guys and, and to, to see people and crowds together and just to play golf and have some sort of normalcy is incredible and it feels great. Smith would ultimately shoot three over on the weekend, which knocked him out of contention for the season's first title. 
while Brendan Leonard carted a third straight round under par on moving day, inching him closer to the lead, yet still five shots back. I'm going to be aggressive out there. I'm going to try and catch up to these guys and make a lot of birdies and come out of the gate strong, and hopefully the putter is rolling and get it rocking. As promised, Leonard came out of the gate strong on Sunday, making three birdies in his first four holes. I got off to a really hot start. I knew that a couple guys were at nine, so that was that was my target to get to nine and hopefully get in the playoff. 54-hole leader Blair Bercy made three straight bogeys on his opening nine, and ultimately a dagger double bogey on the par five 11th hole opened the door for others. Like hometown favorite Kevin Fortin Samar, who carded three birdies on his front nine. It's not something you come here expecting that you'll get the, that many cheers and that, that, that much support, so definitely grateful for that. Ontario native Sudarshan Yella Maraju entered the fold with five birdies in an eight-hole stretch through the turn. I definitely expected that I could play well. It was not like that I was surprised by that. I was just actually doing it is the big thing. But that was no match for Leonard's gutsy performance to close it out. I just knew coming down the stretch, I needed one coming in and tried to birdie the last two. Leonard answered his own call with three birdies in his last five holes, and his nine under number proved to be enough for his maiden win on the circuit. That's why we're all out here. I mean, you want to come out here and you want to perform, and under the gun, you want to be able to pull off the shots. So I, that's what I just kept telling myself is just, commit to this and get it done, and luckily I was able to come away with it. Leonard led the order of merit after his win in the first event of the season, more than twice as far ahead of his closest chasers, Yella Miraju and Casulo, who tied for second. The McKenzie Tour's next stop was in Caledon, Ontario for the Osprey Valley Open, where Leonard will need another strong performance if he wants to hold on to the top spot. In its short history, the Osprey Valley Open has produced great tournaments and even better champions. And if you want to win, you got to go low. In each of the first two editions, the winning score has been 25 under par. In 2018, it was Tyler McCumber. This is big for me from a play and status standpoint. It's nice to get some momentum going. This year, McCumber made his first appearance in the FedEx Cup playoffs in just his second season on the PGA Tour. In 2019, Paul Barjan took the title and kept the momentum going with a win on the Corn Ferry Tour in 2021 and earned his PGA Tour card for next season. If your sights are set on the highest level in golf, it's best you start with some firepower in Caledon which is where the McKenzie Tour made its second stop of the season at TPC Toronto for the Osprey Valley Open. And it was Kingston, Ontario's Noah Steele who got off to a hot start. After opening rounds of 66 and 65 to take a two-shot lead, Steele felt prepared for the weekend, despite his status as an amateur. I've gotten a good feel for everything from tee to green and, and kind of know what I need to do from shot to shot, which is really nice. But uh, yeah, just thankful to be in the position and, and I'm excited for the next two days. Brendan Leonard followed up his week one win with a five under second round, putting him seven shots back of steel through 36 holes. After growing up in the shadows of successful Canadians with PGA Tour success, Leonard has had plenty of motivation to join them. As soon as I picked up a golf club when I was 14, I just immediately became addicted and stopped playing hockey, stopped playing soccer. I immediately started spending like seven, eight hours on the range and then my dad built a, uh, a little net in the garage for me and I was just beating balls in there all day long. There's no one else to blame but yourself out here. You can learn so much from yourself playing this game and I think that's what immediately drew me in. My junior class was, I mean, I had Corey Connors, Taylor Pendrith, Mackenzie Hughes. So I was kind of, I guess, more of like an afterthought. Back in 2019, I was pretty close to quitting right at the end of the year. And a little bit of early 2020, I was, I thought I was done. And my, uh, my parents convinced me to give it one more shot. I really dedicated myself these last two years. And I think it's really been a good choice. Mike Ligix helped me a lot. 
We played together in a mini tour event back in uh, 2016. He's been a good resource for me to just be able to kind of pick his brain. He gives me lots of tips, lots of advice, and he's told me that he believes in my game, so it's, uh, it's helped me a lot. It was a lot of hard work that really paid off for me. So I was, my goal was to win one of those this year, and then my next goal was to be number one on the overall out here. So that was the start I needed, and um, I'm looking forward to achieving those goals. Till the day I die, I think I'll be involved in the golf industry. I don't consider it work. I just consider it my passion and what I love to do. I believe I have the game to play on that level, and it might take a little while, but I think I can still get there. However, back-to-back -back titles were not in the cards as he finished the Osprey Valley Open tied for 11. Noah Steele stayed hot to start the third round, making birdie on the first hole, but cooled down over the next eight. His lead was a mere one shot making the turn. And then he turned it on. He played the first three holes, eagle, birdie, birdie en route to a second nine, 29. I hit a really nice approach into 10 to two or three feet and tapped that in for, for Eagle, and then I just kind of rode that from there, so that was kind of a good kickstarter for me. Noah was playing awesome today. Every tee shot were pretty much right down the middle. His iron shots were pretty close on the hole every time. Etienne Papineau played alongside Steele in round three, shooting a 67 with five birdies but the two were no strangers on the first tee as they are teammates on the Canadian amateur team. We're staying together at the same place. It, yeah, it was really fun for us to kind of feed off of each other and, and we haven't played together in a tournament before, so I think having two AMs from the national team in the final group says a lot about the program. It shows that, that our game is good and uh, that we belong with the professional golfers. It's just a learning experience from us and we're to, just gonna keep going. Steele stretched his lead to seven shots in the final round thanks to five birdies in his first eight holes and cruised to victory to earn his first win in a professional event. It's at the top for me to win a professional event the way that I, I did and I think more so the things I proved to myself this week just with believing in my ability was, was huge. With the win, Steele moved into second place in the order of merit. 65 points behind Brendan Leonard. Etienne Papineau's solo second earned him 300 points and the third spot in the standings. It has not sunk in yet, but super, super thankful to be in the position I am. And I was able to smile out there and enjoy it and, um, and, and play good golf, which was, which was great. A superhuman performance from the Man of Steel. He and others will need that strength as the Mackenzie Tour made its way to the iron-rich soils of Prince Edward Island. The Mackenzie Tour ventured to Prince Edward Island's finest for a two-week stop that created buzz amongst the players. I'm looking forward to uh, heading out to PEI. I'm looking forward to, to hitting up Brudenell and spending some time out there. It's an awesome course for the tour. You gotta hit some really quality shots to play well. I've heard great things about both courses, Thunder Ave and Brudenell. I, I think PI I'm most excited for. It's the first time the circuit made its way to the east coast of Canada, and the excitement was illustrated in the action on the course. After an opening round 69, Ancaster, Ontario's Michael Blair followed it up with seven birdies on day two. Finally some putts were going in. I just uh, didn't make anything for about a month so far, and now all of a sudden they started going in the hole all at the same time. Blair shared the 36-hole lead at nine under before shooting one over in the third round. Quebec's Etienne Bro made four birdies on the front nine on day three. His three under 69 gave him a one-shot lead heading into the final round at nine under. Starting the day, if somebody would, would have told me just 69 in a 40-kilometer gust, I would have taken it all the way, so yeah. But the blustery conditions did not subside in the final round, which led to a 76 for Bro and left the door open for others. 
Blair regained a one-shot lead through the 10th, but quickly gave it away to British Columbia's Maxwell Sear after two bogeys in his next four holes. Yet in the group behind, Sear failed to extend his one-shot lead after coming up short of a birdie on 15, which opened the door back up for Blair, who closed out his round with two birdies on the final three holes to take the clubhouse lead by one and put the pressure on Sear to birdie the last to force a playoff. Staring at a nervy chip, he knocked it close and sank the tying putt. I knew the last few holes coming down the stretch was gonna favor me, so I just kinda had to get there. On the first sudden death playoff hole, Blair was first to putt. It looked pretty straight to me, kind of like just dying a little to the right. So, I, you know, all I tried to do is make sure I made somewhat solid contact and then just see what happens. And I was lucky enough to catch the right side there and drip it in. Now, with the pressure on, Sear to stay alive. I hit a good butt. I knew it was going to be right on that fine line of uh, if it was going to break or not. It just lipped out. To win is a bit of validation to the, you know, sticking with what I've been doing. Uh, it was worth it. With the win, Blair vaulted up the order of merit into second place, right on the heels of Brendan Leonard, who missed the cut. Sears' second place finish jumped him up to number five in the standings, one spot behind Mr. Consistent, Blair Bercy, who notched his third consecutive top five finish. It puts me in a good spot for the uh, season end points list here. That was my goal for the year, was try to get in the top five points list and earn my uh, Mackenzie Tour card for next year. As the Mackenzie Tour stayed on Prince Edward Island for its next event, Blair celebrated his win with a taste of the town. Hi, I'm Michael Blair. I'm Troy Bulmer. I'm Kay Johnson. We're at Bogside Brewing. Hi guys, I'm Dave. Welcome to Bogside. Come on in. Dave, nice. Okay guys, come on up. We'll have a look at the uh, the brew house. Yeah, so everything uh, basically happens here. So everything is touch screen, independently controlled. So if you want to turn on, you just touch it, turn it on. You want to open a valve, close a valve. Yeah, so this is the uh, next stop after we finish brewing. We'll fill those with delicious beer and the yeast will start to get active pretty quickly. Typically for an ale, it's about two weeks and lagers are maybe closer to four. This machine's great, it'll do about a flat and a half a minute. So we'll run this for the day and try and produce between 10 and 12,000 cans. There's usually maybe three flats of of low fills, which staff just take home as a, as a bonus. Yeah, so this is kind of the end of the line for us. Once something ends up in here, it's going across the bar and our customers are gonna to get to enjoy it. There we go. Nice. <laughs> Guaranteed to add five yards to your drive. Yeah. Thanks guys for coming in. Hope you enjoyed your visit here at Bogside Brewing and uh, best of luck in the Brudenell River Classic. Yeah, thank you very Cheers. much. Cheers. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. The Mackenzie Tour sojourned in Prince Edward Island for a second consecutive week this time for the Brudenell River Classic, a 54-hole contest featuring a peculiar design with six par threes, six par fours, and six par fives. The final tournament before the halfway point of the season. British Columbia's Callum Davison took the 36-hole lead at 12 under with nine birdies in the second round, thanks to his practice paying off. I'm making pots, which wasn't the case last week. Spent a lot of time in between events, you know, working on that. If I can just continue that tomorrow, I should be all right. Bedford, Nova Scotia's Eric Banks stood nine shots back at three under par, but his perspective is different than most. While his competitors are thankful to play on the McKenzie Tour this season, Banks is grateful to play the game at all. 
as the date got closer and we kind of uh, met with the doctors and went through side effects or worst case scenario and stuff like that, it really, really started to hit home that this was a very, very serious thing and, uh, you know, death was in the equation. When I went to the University of Florida, they do a freshman physical and one of the last uh, visits of the day was to see a cardiologist. He listened to my heart and heard a second murmur and it ended up being a pretty significant hole in between the two sides of my heart. So all the blood was flowing one way and uh, one side was four times bigger than it should have been and one side wasn't working at all. The only way to fix it was to uh, crack me open and put a patch in and the cardiologist who did it saw the heart shrink to normal size right away. Couldn't walk 15 feet for the first week um, and then I was on a weekly walking program of like one minute on Monday, minute and a half on Tuesday and just kind of worked my way up. It was uh, pretty shocking to be in that physical state after being a healthy athlete for 19 years before that. I made a little promise to myself like, you know, once you get back healthy you need to, you know, not take for granted what your body can do and, you know, try and get a little sweat in every day and feel a little bit better. Sometimes I reflect on it like, okay, I'm stuck in traffic in Toronto, but it's certainly not as bad as that. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely grounds you and um, can, it's beneficial to look back on it now. Banks ultimately fell short at Brudenell, but remains within striking distance in the season-long race. For the second week in a row, Prince Edward Island's beauty took a back seat to tough conditions, with rain adding to the challenge of the final round. But it didn't slow down Callum Davison, who made back-to-back -back birdies on holes 10 and 11 to get to 16 under par. All the way till 12, it wasn't bad. It was, I would say, be, was playing the easiest out of all the days, just because the greens were a little softer. Osprey Valley Open champion Noah Steele made a charge with five birdies in his first 15 holes to get one shot back of Davison at 15 under. I figured we were in for a long haul and kind of tried to prepare myself for that. The weather worsened as Steele played the 16th hole, and despite trying a backwards hat to help, it wasn't enough to prevent a bogey that dropped him to 14 under. It just progressively got harder and harder, and in those last like four holes, you couldn't keep anything dry anymore. Davison came to the final hole at 16 under, needing a bogey to secure the win. And he did just that. I hit it good off the tee all week, um, so that was huge. I've been struggling with that this season. And I just made some pots when I needed to. With the win, Davison jumped to fourth in the order of merit, behind Prince Edward Island Open champion Michael Blair and the season's first winner, Brendan Leonard. For the first time this year, there is a new name atop the standings, and it is Noah Steele, thanks to a win and a runner-up in two starts. I got four events left, so hopefully see what I can do. At the halfway point of the season, the time to make a move in the order of merit is now. The Mackenzie Tour heads to the western half of Canada, starting with the Elk Ridge Open in Saskatchewan, followed by the ATB Financial Classic in Alberta, and finishing in British Columbia with the Gulf BC Championship and the Reliance Properties DC Bank Open. Four chances to earn their status for the 2022 McKenzie Tour season and pave their path to the grandest stage in golf.